Oh, hey. <laughs> no, you were there. Um, just looking to finish up my wine holders today. I have probably about three of them I'm gonna to try to get done. Um, the last time we met, um, we had the two holders that I had cut out, bored the holes, uh, left them longer than what I originally need them to be. And today what I'm gonna do, since I put four coats of polyurethane on both of these, I'm gonna wax these up. I'm gonna take them back to the old uh, miter saw where I'll cut off that final 45 degree angle and then I'm gonna see if it works for both of these bottles. The other thing that I want to mention to you, if you think back to the last episode or the last two episodes, we had a wine bottle holder that was already cut to the exact size. And I always think that there's a disadvantage to that, especially if you haven't finished it. Because if you cut that angle at a 45, and then you try to finish it, what you would usually have to do if you want to get a coat of polyurethane on both sides is put two screws in. So if you cut that angle at 45, then put the screws in, you're going to have two screw holes left on this. So that's the reason why this is longer than the 10 and 5 eighths, the exact length I need it to be. I don't care how long it is. When I cut it, I'm going to get rid of the holes that I put in to hold on to this when I'm polyurethaning. And the other thing is it'll clean it up as well. So let me just finish waxing um, this maple one. I'll see if that one works first. If you remember our little lessons on polyurethaning, I mentioned to you guys that I put a coat of polyurethane on, I scuff sand it, I take all the dust off. Then the next thing that I do is I put another coat of polyurethane on, I scuff sand it, I take all the dust off. Then I put another coat of polyurethane, well, so on and so forth until it feels good. When I looked at these, this maple always is super clean if I put at least three coats on, sometimes even four, which I put on this, and then wax this, maple comes out jet smooth. So that's why I really want it to work well with this. The oak, that wormy piece of oak, looked really cool the way I see it. So I'm gonna wax this up, we'll give it a shot how we finish this. But what I'm doing here is just waxing this. On the edges and the ends, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of wax on and it's always a lot of bit of rubbing. Everybody thinks the wax makes it magical, makes it smooth. Well, it's really the wax that sort of just adds a little bit of oil to that top coat. It's really the abrasiveness of the steel wool because remember steel wool is like a piece of 400 grit or a piece of 600 grit. It's gonna take off some of those high uh, dust particles and smooth out some of that surface. So when I do this, I rub in super hard when I do the surfaces, the edges, and of course the end, a little bit more wax. And now I think I'm almost ready to buff this thing off. I gotta check, see if I did both surfaces. I definitely did that surface. Let me just hit this one more time. The other thing with waxing, if you wax a project, keep in mind that if I put something wet or hot, sometimes it leaves a ring. What you're doing is when you put wax on it, you allow that wax to be discolored by any kind of moisture, heat, or humidity. So on a tabletop, a coffee tabletop, or a night tabletop, a lot of times I'll tell people you have to be either super careful that you're gonna use a coaster, or the other thing that you can do is not wax it at all. Just simply use pumice or rotten stone, put a little steel wool, a little bit of oil, and you could just rub that in as hard as you possibly can. That'll give you a nice finish and it usually won't discolor because it's just the polyurethane on the top if you choose to use polyurethane. So what I'm gonna do is buff off my wax. This thing feels really good. And I think I'm all set to make some cuts. The fun part about woodworking, ah yes, creating sawdust. So if you look at this, if I look at this under the light, you'll notice that there's definitely reflectiveness to it. And maple, the tight grain feels super great. The wormy part, 
Um, the spouted part looks really cool. So I'm all set satisfied with this. So I'm gonna take the tape off and I'm gonna take my two screws out. I'll get out my screw gun. And what I'm gonna do is just back out my screws and I don't wanna throw them out. I'm gonna use those again. Take the tape off. I can use that for something else. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. And now comes the part that I see what the heck this thing looks like. Remember, I wanted this at a 45 degree angle so it holds one or both of those bottles of wine. If I can get lucky, I can use uh, get both bottles on it, the big 1.5 and the 7 point, uh, or the 750 milliliter. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make my final cut on this. The other thing that I have to keep in mind is that this hole that is bored at this angle, that 45 degree angle, is bored at this angle. You notice that this part is further down than the top part. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut this at a 45 degree angle, the same 45 degree angle that this hole is bored at. So I have to, again, think before I do this, and I have a choice. I could either cut my angle this way, my miter this way, or I could cut my miter this way. So if I look at the direction of this hole, it's drilled at this angle, so I wanna cut it at this angle. I want it to be parallel. Unlike a miter, like a picture frame miter, where you want them to be opposite, I want this to be in the same angle that this hole is drilled at. Now, I have checked, and I'm gonna tell you that the number that works for me is 10 and 5 eighths. If I go 10 and 5 eighths down from the top end of this, and I have that as the long part of my miter, I can usually get both bottles to work out. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do in here as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna take my pencil out, my tape measure out, and I'm gonna mark from this end 10 and 5 eighths over, and I'm gonna draw the line at 10 and 5 eighths parallel to this hole. So in order to do this, I've got to think, of course, put it in the vise, and here's what you want to remember. This has a finish on it. If I try to mark it with a pencil, that pencil is not going to stay very well on something that's finished. It's been waxed, it's been four coats of polyurethane, I'm just putting a pencil on it. So what I want to do here is I want to get out my roll of masking tape. Huh, 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 ah. Here it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my masking tape on the edge so I can mark that out. The other thing I'm gonna need is my combination square when I do this. So I'm gonna come over to my tool cabinet and take out my combination square. Everybody should remember that a combination square has a 90 degree angle as well as a 45 degree angle. This is, gonna, this is gonna make sure that I draw my angle at the correct, um, uh, draw my line at the correct angle. Okay, so if I take this bad boy, I place this here, what I wanna do is I wanna cut it this way. If I flip it around, I wanna cut it this way. That's the way I wanna do it. That's the way I wanna do that. I wanna put my, lower, my, my lower hole is gonna go up against the fence. So here's the way I'm gonna position in the vise. I want to put this masking tape about 10 and 5 eighths down from this top edge. So let's see if we can't do this so that you guys can follow along with this. My angle is going to go in this direction, which means I'm going to start from this point and measure down 10 and 5 eighths here. So I'm going to take my handy dandy tape measure, put it up against the end, I'm gonna lay it on the edge and put a dot at 10 and 5 eighths. And of course, as I've said this a hundred times, the most important thing is that you know how to use one of these. If you don't know 10 and 5 eighths from 10 and 11 sixteenths, you're gonna be off. I also did something with that jig 
that makes it a little bit more difficult if you're working with this in our shop to cut out these wine holders. And I'll explain that at the end. So now what I'm gonna do is take the combination square, understand that my hole is going in this direction, this direction over here, just like that. So I want to, and I'm just gonna draw a line across the entire thing so that when I think about this, does the line go in this direction here or does the line go in this direction here? Let's see, it starts here, it's coming this way, thinking, 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 here's the way I want my angle to go. So right there, that is 10 and 5 eighths from the end to the longest part of the miter. The hole is drilled in this direction. I'm now going to take this over to the miter saw and cut that, again, leaving the line. I don't want to cut my line off. So let me take this bad boy, and we'll make my final cut, and hopefully my wine holder will be done. I could probably start drinking by uh, 11 o'clock. Let's go. Oh, uh, walk this way. This way. I need this at uh, an angle, a 45 degree angle, as we said it 100 times already, to adjust this miter saw. There's a clamp lock that's on the tip of it, that black clamp lock. If I loosen up the clamp lock, and right now this is set at exactly 90 degrees or zero, depending on how you look at it, now I want to move this at 45 degrees. I don't want to move it 45 degrees to my left. If I try to move this, nothing happens. The only way it'll move is if I take this little spring-loaded clip on the bottom, squeeze this up, and now, using my strength, I can slide this over to 45 degree angle. Again, a positive lock at 10, 15, 22 and a half, 30, and finally, 45 degrees. So there's my 45 degree angle lock. I'm gonna put my, push my clamp down, and now I'm all set to make my cut. If I take this board up against the fence, the critical thing is that I'm going parallel to the hole that I drilled. And if you notice, this is the lower hole, this is the higher hole. So it is going at that 45 degree angle. I'm gonna use my left hand to hold the stock up against the fence and I'm gonna bring this down. Sometimes, and I've had the experience of people working in this being super afraid of the sound of this miter saw. If this scares you, and the only reason why I say this is I had a student years ago who started to make this cut. He had the whole wine holder done, started to make the cut, and then all of a sudden got so scared by the saw, he let everything go. Wine holder was off the wall, shot back. The, the, the uh, kids in the class were, what just happened? If this really bothers you, another safe way that you could get around this is you can use a clamp. We could simply use a deep throw clamp. We could clamp it to the fence if that scares you. But my suggestion is if you keep your left hand all the way to the left, you shouldn't have a problem. Roll up my sleeves. I'm just gonna cut this without a clamp. And as always, I wanna leave the line. So I'm gonna take my safety glasses out. Nobody is around. I'm in a safe distance. If you come over to this side, cameraman, when I bring the saw down, and you notice that the guard goes up, I could see that if I position it right here, I'm cutting to the right-hand side of the line. In other words, right there, you notice that the saw blade is leaving the line. That's where I wanna cut. I don't wanna cut it directly on it. I don't wanna cut it in the middle of it. I wanna cut it right and exactly to the line, never on the line, to the line. So, with my left hand at a safe distance, I'm going to hold this here. Line up my saw blade. That looks pretty darn accurate. What I'm going to do is just simply bring this straight down. Don't twist your wrist, nothing funky. All I want to do is line it up and cut. I'll shut it off, keep the 
saw down to prevent any kickback that sometimes happens. So here's my waist piece and here's my cut. What I want you to notice is that I left the line. The line is not off. This is cut 10 and 5 eighths from this point down to here because remember I drew that line all the way across after I thought about what I was doing. So now I should be able to take my masking tape, take it off and put the bottles on. Here's the other thing that I wanted to show you. Remember I was telling you about the wine holder that I used uh, the other day and it was already cut. I put another coat of polyurethane on this. This was the Cypress one. And we talked about how cool the grain looks on this. I mentioned to you earlier that this was cut to the exact length before we ever put a finish on it. And remember when we were finishing this before, I put two screws in, I suspended it, and I polyurethane the whole thing. The thing that was a little trickier about this is that I could only finish one side of this at a time. As a matter of fact, I just put another coat of polyurethane, my last coat on this side. But then what I wanna do is flip it around and put another coat on this side. The danger with that is that if I'm doing one side at a time and I happen to have a hole here, I can have polyurethane go in the hole and drip out the back side. That's really not what you're after at all. If you notice a drip over here or a drip over here, it looks awful. So that's, why, that's the reason why I like to leave it longer and then we cut the angle later. You don't see any screw holes in this. We used to do this, cut it, and then put the screw holes in and finish it. And by leaving it longer, it eliminates those screw holes. Let's just check to see if our wine holder works. Come on down. I'm gonna do the same exact thing for that um, uh, wormhole oak one. Oh, geez. Wormhole oak, I knew that was there. I'll finish this one up after you guys leave. But what I'm gonna do now is take my masking tape. Um, the other thing that I want you guys to be able to answer is how long does this wine holder have to be from end to the longest part of the miter? All right, end to the longest part, part of the miter, the correct answer. 10 and 5 eighths is what worked for me with this. And we'll, we'll check to see if it works out on this one. All right, nothing worse than giving somebody a really cool gift and it not working out. So let me say a little prayer. A couple of our fathers, a few Hail Marys. I'm gonna take my bottles of wine. 19 Crimes is a good one. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna put this on here like this and we'll see how this works. There, <laughs> perfect. Look at that. Look at how good, no, ooh. I hate it when somebody gives somebody a gift and then say, says, go ahead, it's yours, and they don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it, let's set it up for them. You take this bad boy, you stick it in the lower side hole, not the top, the higher side hole, the lower side hole. Now what I have to do is I have to find the sweet spot here. The center of gravity of this is gonna line up over that miter. So this weight will equal this weight over that miter. So if I take this and I put it too far like this, oop, there's too much weight on the front. So now what I'm gonna do is take it, move it back a little bit. Nope, still too much weight. Move it back a little bit. Da -da. And I guarantee if you set this up at a restaurant, you'll have 20 people around your table going like this. How did you do that? It's magic. Well, it's the simplest thing. It looks so much better than taking a bottle, sticking it in the top where you board the hole at a 90 degree angle. It shows nothing. It's just sticking up. This bad boy looks so good because it's parallel to the table. Let's give it a shot. And sometimes this is difficult for a 7.5 or a 1.50 bottle, but look at how cool that looks. This is a great Christmas gift. It's a great birthday gift. It's a great wedding gift. It's a great anniversary gift. You give somebody one of these, you set it up, you walk away, and everybody you think you're David Blaine, you know? 
taken off your finger, uh, 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 a couple, couple of card tricks or two, balancing a wine bottle, you're all set. So like I said, this is a quick hitter, an easy project for you to make, and you could make a bunch of them. I had a student years ago who knocked off about 12 of these, sold these on the internet for like $30 right before Christmas, made a killing. So this is an easy thing to do. And again, you could do it with scrap wood if you wanted to. You could glue up a bunch of pieces like this cutting board here. You could just find sc scrap pieces of wood, put them together at any angle, make that cut, and you've got a nice gift. Any questions? You make sure that you make one of these and give it to somebody, and I guarantee they'll be surprised with it. Oh, come on. Come on, idiot. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, come on, come on. Remember this jig that I made? I made this jig for my class, and I said that the piece in between here had to be three inches wide, which was a nice, even, round number. So you know what happened? I started thinking, you know, kids don't have to learn how to read a ruler if all you have to do is cut a board three inches wide and stick it in this jig. So what I did was I took off the side pieces and I said, I'm gonna make it wider and I'm gonna make it a little trickier. I don't like these wine bottle holders this wide. This width, about two and three quarters, to me looks too narrow. I don't even care for the width of this. As a matter of fact, when I was wor working on this, the cameraman said, you're gonna keep it that wide? I just said, good point. I took off the sides, I made new, two new side supports. So if you happen to be making this jig in my class or cutting out a wine bottle holder in my class, the distance between here and here is now three and 11 sixteenths. What does that mean? What does three and 11 sixteenths mean? It means that you have to think, oh yes. So you have to be able to read a ruler, go over to that table saw and understand where three and 11 sixteenths is, as opposed to saying, that's ah, just three inches, I'll cut a board three inches. Remember, the thinking's the hard part. Good luck with this project. We'll come back with another one. Maybe we'll do, I don't know, maybe a box or something. I feel like making a box or maybe we'll make a box next time. Yeah, there's a great box in the back room, a nice walnut box that Stephen made. Maybe we'll try to make one of those. Anyway, you guys have a great evening, great day, and good luck with your wine bottle holders. Guess what? Time to pop the cork.